Hello fellow Vikings. So over the last months I've been uploading some raw, basically unedited footage of my no portal, no map uh, run and uh, with no commentary and I thought they were pretty long and maybe pretty boring to watch for some so I decided to do a commented series and uh, on a kind of like a recap of what has been my no portal no map run so let's get started and well I'm gonna in this vi in this series of videos I'm gonna just comment some of the highlights of my playthrough as well as give some tips or advice that might be useful for new players for example right now I just spawn in the uh, summoning stones and as you can see I always check uh, the back side of the of the um, stones of the altars uh, because there's usually food there either uh, some uh, mushrooms or berries or something to eat so it's always a good idea to do that uh, I wouldn't recommend what I'm doing right now, which is to chase a deer, uh, punch him to death, because it's actually quite difficult. It used to be a lot more difficult before one of the updates where they decided to make uh, deer dumber for some reason, I don't know. But um, the thing is that I really want kind of like to skip some of the first steps. Uh, and if I manage to get some... Uh, Deer hide early on, it's always a good thing. Anyways, uh, I'll probably mm, wouldn't recommend this as it can lead to a waste of time. In this this time I got lucky that the deer was so stupid to get into the water and that way I could punch him to death and get my first piece of deer hide which I will be needing uh, for many things that I need to craft. Another thing that I want to do right away is start picking flint. Well, uh, first off, let's explain what rules I'm gonna be following if I have any mods installed. As you could see now, I, when I picked that flint, several popped. And that is because I'm using one mod only, which is the mass farming mod, which is the only mod that I always use because I think it should be implemented into the vanilla game. I think it's a very good addition. <clears throat> be able to plant in a grid, be able to pick up uh, staff like uh, one clicking on one in the small and things in the small radius of the same type will pop. So as I'm in the coast, that's a lucky thing, it's a good thing because I chose this uh, seat randomly. I, I didn't make a choice and then uh, take a look at the web page or anything like that. I just put a random seat and started. So what are gonna be the rules? As you can see, I have no minimap on the right top side, which is the usual thing. Uh, you can disable the minimap uh, without having to use cheats. You can just uh, type in the chat box no map and, and the map will be disabled. Both the minimap and the map that you usually access with the key M, with the M key. So as you saw, I also found some mushrooms behind it. At first, another thing that changes in this kind of run is how the back series work. Uh, at this time, I didn't know how they worked, so you could see me there pressing the pressing the stone and, and not knowing what to do or what it meant. So uh, later on I discovered how they actually work. I, I had to read about it and, and finally realized how they work. You basically uh, have to interact with the altar, with the, sorry, with the Begdesir and uh, if you, left your, you leave your character idle, it will face towards the direction of the boss. Okay, so in this video I'm gonna be using a lot of these houses it's funny, I'm gonna skip now uh, because we cannot watch the entire footage, but basically uh, I'm gonna make that cabin my mm, first shelter. Uh, there is the mass farming mod right there. And I'm also using render limits in an attempt to make things visible a bit more far. Didn't push it too, too much and I don't think I can tell the difference to be honest, but I did try it. Those are the two only mods, the rest is in uh, vanilla experience. Uh, with these restrictions of not being able to build portals at all and not having a map or a mini map. And this is a big deal, especially the second part. Some people might think that maybe not having a, not having a, a, a portals it's a game changer and it is, but not having a map is a real deal here. 
and it makes everything so much harder. You have to keep trace of where you are, where you're going. Uh, you have to make a lot of paths and signs and compasses. So it's actually pretty challenging and it changes the whole experience a lot. So here you can see me picking up flint and wood uh, and that I can find on the ground to craft my, my first things. I'm gonna be using that uh, small uh, cabin that uh, we saw there. Uh, this kind of playthrough, this also forces you to have more of a nomad style. I'm gonna be coming back to this island because every time I kill a boss, I need to sail back to this island. So I need always to keep in mind where it is. But I'm not gonna go big on building, or at least that's my initial intention. And I'm just gonna um, try to uh, make bases everywhere I can. I mean, like one main, ba main base per island at least, and then maybe several outposts. Since not having portals makes everything uh, much more complicated, and not having a map, obviously, a lot more too. Uh, as I will later find out, especially when you die, it's very important you were where you were because otherwise you're not going to be able to find your remains. So I keep picking up flint, which is pretty important at the beginning. I kill the boar too and when I have a chance and I keep picking up wood because I'm going to be needing to craft the workbench, the first upgrade and uh, obviously the basic tools also gathering all the mushrooms or fruits that I can find. Uh, punching a tree is always an alternative, but I would recommend to use a tool, uh, an axe preferably. I don't usually craft the stone axe, I just go for the flint axe straight away because I think um, it's not worth it, I mean I don't really need it and it's yeah, I usually the swap is very very quick. So I, I usually go for that first and I you will realize as we go through this that I like using trolls for labor especially to get me early on some fine wood and some uh, bronze if I can okay so we fast forward to the night of the, for that first day I already crafted the workbench and the first upgrade for the workbench that's why I was picking up so much flint and um, I'm gonna leave the beehive for the next day, I'm not gonna worry about it. I made a fire and I made um, a bed and I'm gonna try to fix this hole in the, in the roof but I don't like these pre-made structures, they're usually made in a weird way where things don't, don't properly snap. Anyways, uh, I go to bed and from here we're gonna fast forward to the seventh day where I have uh, already explored the region a little bit, get myself an idea more or less of what do we have around, where is my first black forest. Uh, there you can see for a second the, the mod manager that I use for that mass farming mod that's uh, active. And so I go on my seventh day, I, I, I had already been to the black forest briefly, uh, during the second or third day, I think I was actually killed by a brute. Uh, my first uh, shameful death. Although I did have not, a, mm, not many problems recording my remains, I actually built some other um, shelter in some kind of village that I found. And, um, well, in, in this video I, I found my, as I was mentioning before, one thing that I love to do is to actually use trolls in my favor. So, in this, this day is the first day I've, I encounter a troll in the black forest and um, as you can see I, I like to play with them uh, a little bit and see if I can manage even a risk in my life to see if I can manage to, uh, for them to get me some uh, fine wood, which has, at this point I couldn't get anywhere how else, and um, get me also some copper, which uh, if I have the needed cores, um, <coughs> I can I can actually use to make my first uh, bronze tool. I basically, as you will see later on, I almost always skip as a rule of thumb the Bronze Age. Uh, all I craft from that age is the axe and the pickaxe because I don't think it's worth the green. 
uh, I mean, I, I usually go for the troll set and I just use them. So, weapons of choice, I, I think one of the first ones was the flame knife because uh, I've played several playthroughs already with diff testing the, out the different weapons and I think I say I can say for a fact that fl uh, knives are pretty OP. So, and it's pretty easy to get early on if you have access to flint, which you should, uh, because you also need it for the uh, workbench upgrade. So I got a, I've got a knife pretty early on. I also went straight for the flint axe, as I said. I usually don't craft a stone axe, even if it's cheap and easy, because I don't really need it. You can just pick up wood from the floor. And I crafted also like the wooden shield. Uh, the club was obviously the first thing I crafted because it's cheap and easy, it's like your starter weapon that I... and uh, the good bland weapon that you can use. So... Those are basically, well, I obviously crafted a hoe because it's always useful too, and uh, I crafted the shield even though uh, you won't see me using it much because I don't really like the parrying system in this game, I think it's a bit too lenient in my opinion. I don't know, I find it a bit uh, overpowered, like um, the way you stagger enemies and how easy it's to kill them then. So, and, and it's not very demanding in, in the timing, like other games, like Souls games or, or such, where it's really, you really have to nail it in order to be able to parry. And I don't know why, but mm, in this game it seems a bit like lenient and fair. To, uh, so I don't, I don't really do it. I'm picking up some <clears throat> fine wood, which I'm gonna use mostly. Uh, besides the comfort boost I can get from the furniture, is uh, mostly thinking on uh, uh, the the bow, the fine wood bow that it's actually bronze tier, let's say, but it doesn't really require bronze. Well, it requires an bronze axe to cut it down but if you're uh, smart using the trolls as I'm doing even if uh, sometimes I was close to dying I think it's worth it because you can basically uh, skip uh, that part and go like get a, a next tier weapon weapon very early on which I think it's great so I was as you could see I, I have been surrounded by great dwarves but the flint knife it's pretty good at taking them out and staggering them so so far so good, I managed to get mm, quite a lot of fine wood, uh, all, all the fine wood that I needed from this troll. And as you will see later on, I, I, I love to kite them wherever I want and need to. So I go find, uh, later on I will go on uh, find some copper note, see if I can have him uh, work on it <laughs> and get some extra resources for myself so here you can see me completely swarmed by gray dwarfs I don't know it's crazy sometimes they are, I think it's by the noises due to the noises that the troll makes that many of them like hear you from afar and, and come over because I don't think I saw any spawners or anything or any uh, towers that might be like a special spawn point for them I just think it's the noise that the troll is causing that it's bringing them but as you can see the flame knife is doing its job and I keep trying I'm, I finally end up spending like the whole day with this troll uh, I skipped the part in which he helped me also gather core wood which I could have done on my own but since I already had the fine wood and I want the uh, fine wood bow I needed some core wood so I took him through the woods took some core wood and now I uh, brought him here to smash this uh, piece of copper see if I can get some free copper for myself uh, without even knowing where the first boss is. I, I still haven't found him, uh, I still don't know how the back visitors work and um, as you will see later I, I kind of stumble upon the altar. Uh, usually it's pretty easy, I mean in other playthroughs uh, it was pretty easy to find him but it took me until day 25 this time. Anyways, I spent the seventh day with the troll the whole day making him work in getting me some more um, copper which is gonna be useful if I wanna craft the um, either the bronze pickaxe or the bronze axe or both which I think is what I ended up doing. Mm.
one of the things that I tried to do as almost as soon as I started playing was paying close attention to the sound, especially during sunset and sundown, to have some sort of idea of the um, different compass points that uh, at least east west more or less to have an idea where I am, where I'm moving towards, how should I go back. Because see, it's actually pretty easy to get lost. I mean, I'm, we're so used to using the minimap and just follow it with our eyes, like if it was like a GPS. But once you don't have it and you don't even have a map you can open to check, it's it's actually pretty confusing sometimes. Um, so what I've been doing mostly is to stick to the coast, which is the and follow it in both directions to explore and. Um, to gather materials and as you can see I crafted most of the leather gear and uh, the helmet too <clears throat> and not knowing how to use the bag this year so as I said before I happened to stumble upon it and uh, quite late uh, on the night of the day 24th uh, yeah on the, the day 24 uh, so what I had to do, obviously, was, since this wasn't in the coast uh, exactly, uh, what I immediately do is to start making a path with the hole uh, towards my uh, base, so I can find it whenever I'm able to uh, gather, if I don't have them already, the deer trophies that I need to summon it, and I'm, I'm well, I'm sure I'm well prepared. So I actually said it wrong, it was the night of day 23 when I stumbled upon the altar and the next morning as I already had uh, everything I needed, um, like the deer trophies and everything, I went uh, straight ahead and uh, went back to find Ektir and finally fight it. So, as I was mentioning before, I think that what they did to this boss is uh, complete shame, because in my opinion, he's easily one of the coolest boss, probably with the Elder, in my opinion, I mean, the music I think is one of the best, the, the ambience of that fight, uh, I mean, even how he's looking, it's absolutely awesome, but it's so easy. If it almost feels like you know, like a tutorial for it's like the first boss. I know it should be easy, but it's still too easy. I know. I mean, I've seen people just like punch it to death and make it a lot. Of, even the devs did it once. So it's actually even if uh, his moves, for example, are pretty telegraphed and I think pretty easy to, to dodge or whatever. Um, it's not even necessary. I mean, you can just face tank it and, and kill it pretty easily, right? So. Uh, I don't think it's actually that that uh, hard to. I mean, they should have made it harder, in my opinion, if you ask me. Uh, but that's maybe just how well the challenge. I don't know. So I think I've got enough deer to make the sacrifice, and I do so, and so the fight starts. I make sure that I'm recording because I already had problems at the times in which I thought I was recording and then I wasn't. And here we've got, I don't know how to pronounce his name, actually, it's like Hector or something like that. I don't know, I have no idea, to be honest. Uh, my English is not so good and uh, I'm not sure, I mean, that's probably some kind of Nordic language more than English, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know how to pronounce it correctly. So with the knife, I mean, with the flint knife, with level 2, if I'm not mistaken, as you can see, it doesn't take long to actually kill it. I mean, I know there are easier, faster ways, cheesier ways, you know, like uh, uh, fireplaces, I could fireplace him and, and kill it much faster, but I just thought I would fight him with the knife, because I think I've never done so before. I always try to try new things. I think in my last playthrough it was the spear I was focused on, and I don't know, this time, to be honest, I really uh, wanted to get over with pretty uh, fast and as you can see I'm, I'm barely taking any damage he's uh, down to half, half his health and it's actually pretty pretty easy to to be done with this boss even if you take you can see there he made like the heavy attack I, I just stamped her and I didn't take almost any damage so as long as you are eating, eating decent food for this level for this gear 
which is very basic, obviously. And uh, it's pretty easy, I mean, not to die uh, at all. I mean, it's a boss that, I, as I was saying, I don't think it would hurt anyone if they made it a little bit more difficult. I'm not saying to make it super hard or super boring or a damaged sponge. I don't think that's... because that's what I feel they've done with other bosses. I feel more than difficult, they made them boring. Like, it takes a long while to, to take all their health. You know what I mean? But this one, I mean, not make it more beefy, just make it... His, his attack's a bit more powerful, so it's more important to actually dodge. Anyways, uh, it's done, I've got the antlers, now I can mine my own bronze if I want to. Or uh, even if I got the troll to do so, and I, later on we'll have him get me some uh, thing to. And uh, I, once I've got the head, the first thing I need to do obviously is go back. I, as you can see I have already some... Uh, some in my, uh, some tin in my inventory, thanks to thanks to the troll probably, and um, I made my way back. Uh, as you can see, I've made paths to the sacrificial stones or spawning stones, and there I hang the head. So I've got the Akithir power, which is gonna come in super handy in this kind of playthrough. As I'm gonna have to be running around a lot since I don't, I cannot craft any portals. That means sailing and walking a lot and making many paths, not just compasses. As I mentioned before, here you can see I've got this path that leads to uh, both of my villages. Uh, that thing that you see over there, that it's uh, made of wood. It's also some uh, signpost I made with uh, basic with the coordinates, with the basic directions like east, west and here right, right next to the altar is one of my uh, shelters or bases. I have another one as I said in a different village which is close to the black forest but this is kind of like my main one. And that was all for this first episode. I'll probably do another one of the next until the next boss. So thank you very much for watching and if you made it this far and you like the content, please give me a like and maybe click on that bring button. See you next day.